Here's the top one. Yeah, here. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, let us all just come to together. As we put ourselves in an attitude of worship this morning, let us all be quiet and be still before the Lord as we seek to worship him this morning. The prayer this morning comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, reading from verse 10b to, through to 13. Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel. From everlasting to everlasting, yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor and the glory and the majesty for everything in heaven and earth is yours yours lord is the kingdom you are exalted as head over all wealth and honor come from you you are the ruler of all things in your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all now our god we give you thanks and praise your glorious name we give the lord thanks for the prayer of this morning now invite our brother Howard Hines to come and to hoping in prayer let us all stand morning everyone let us pray most righteous and heavenly father we come to you again today giving the praise the glory and the adoration that you so deserves oh father as we go on our worship service this morning we ask you God, that your presence be on us oh god let everything oh father that is being said today be to the glory and honor of your name oh god oh god bless the proceeding oh god that Everyone will be blessed, leaving this place touched by your spirit, O oh God. Thank you, O oh Father, for waking us up early this morning so we can come and give you praise. And God, as we go today, just be with us. Hasten the footsteps, O oh Father, that of those who are coming, O oh Father, and continue to be with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Let us all stand as we invite the song is to come and to lead us in the song. Here I am to worship. Here I am to praise as we worship the Lord this morning. Singing. Yeah. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together
Bless the Lord this morning, for we are here to worship, and we are here to bow down as we worship the Lord this morning, because he's worthy to be praised. Amen? Yes, indeed, the Lord our God is worthy to be praised, and this is why we are here this morning, to lift him up, to magnify, and to worship him. Let me at this time welcome you to the house of the Lord this morning. Let me also welcome those who are joining us online, whether it's by Zoom or the YouTube. We want to welcome you this morning. And we trust as you worship with us this morning, indeed you worship with one which be joyous and sweet in the Lord. Let me just welcome, first of all, uh, the brothers, missionaries of the poor who are here this morning. Let you all, can you all stand there at the back? I want to give them a hand this morning. And they are joining us this morning to worship with us in the house of the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Is there any other persons here for the very, very first time in this house, Bethlehem Gospel Assembly? Anybody? So why should I? All right, stand. I don't know why you're hiding. So stand and give us your name, please. Yeah. Brittany. Nice to have you. Good. Amen. Thank you, man. I trust this morning as you worship with us, Brittany, that you your worship will be on with the good, all right? God bless you. Thank you for coming. All right, um, for those who are on, joining us for the first, first time online via the Zoom or the YouTube platform, welcome. Welcome as you worship with us this morning. Let me at this time just give you some of our notices. And uh, I'm going to start with some of our, our spiritual birthdays this morning for those who met and trust the Lord as they have personal savior. It's come on right here. She's not here. I have seen her this morning. Now she celebrated her uh, spiritual birthday on the 4th. Our brother Hudson Clennon um, also on the 5th. All right. Birthdays are sister Stephanie Campbell. If she's joining us online and she's listing her birthday is today. So we say happy birthday to you if you are listening online. And that God will continue to bless you, Sister Stephanie Campbell. Also, Sister Julian Barrett will be celebrating her birthday on the seventh. And who? Oh, Jared. Oh yes, Sister Julian Jared. You're going to give me a warm time when I see her. All right, Sister Sharon Burton, you're on the ninth. All right, God bless you when your birthday do come. All right, I haven't seen it in the anniversaries, but we just want to. We should those who went to be celebrating their birthdays this week and those who are celebrating today, we just want to wish them a happy birthday and I trust that God will continue to bless them. Sunday school, later on at 10 a.m. this morning, boys and girls who are here and teachers are here this morning, Sunday school begins at 10 a.m. immediately after service. The care group leaders who are here this morning, please be reminded that our meeting starts at 6 p.m. online, care group leaders. Please, your meeting gets on the way at 6 p.m. sharp. Prayer and fasting, the first Monday tomorrow, um, we're asking all members who can meet in the sanctuary uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, please join us here at our, in our sanctuary at 10 a.m. And for those who can't join us, if you can spend some time during the day to, for prayer and fasting, so many things to, uh, to pray about, our sanctuary, uh, our members, the situation in our, in our country, all these things we want to pray and fast about. And you can also join us at 8 p.m. tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, as we continue in our prayer. The Good News Club, we ask you to come and share the gospel with the young ones each Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. down there, all the way down there at Palm Grove Estate. And we want to, you know, for those who can join our brother uh, Leopold Johnson, sister, uh, Marlene, yes, to come and to join them. They need help, so if we can come and to be with them and to assist in the sharing the gospel with those who have itching ears to hear the word. All right, please remember, I'm encouraging us, everybody here in the sanctuary this morning, a number of us are here this morning. I would love to see you all um, this Wednesday. This Wednesday, we'll come for a meeting for a prime meeting and Bible study. Um, we continue to look at the whole matter of predestination and very important um, issue, very important topic. We want to come and we ask you to come and to bring your questions and your concerns that you have 
have this one. Now is the time you, you can come and bring all these issues this Wednesday. All right, but first of all, come for the prayer, right? Those don't come for the study, you know, come also for the prayer as well. And for those who have always joined join us on, online for a prime meeting and Bible study, we're asking you to come. If you can come, please, if, please make your way out uh, at our Bible study. Choir rehearsals this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. I've seen members here this, um, this morning. Please remember our prayer practice this Thursday at 6.30. Youth link up this Friday at 7 p.m. And we're asking those who are here this morning to remember uh, your special meeting uh, this Friday at 7 p.m. Our special project day still continues. We have had one uh, last Saturday because of the uh, board meeting and the pep, um, meeting that they had yesterday. So we're going to ask you to come this Saturday. I'm inviting you this Saturday, everybody come and see if we can finish up some. Well, I, I see we have finished with some of the chairs, all the chairs already, but we still have some more work to do. Still, we still have some more chairs to do. Still have more chairs? Wow, we have 100 more chairs to do. So please, um, <laughs> if you can come on out uh, this Saturday. So what people can put the material, do some stapling, do some screwing up of the chairs. We ask you to come on out this Saturday, please. Uh, a funeral service for Andre Lindo, son of Roger Lindo, who lives all the way at Sand and St. Joseph Road here, will be held here on Saturday, September 9 at 10 a.m. Roger, who have lost his son recently, um, the funeral service will be here at Bethel uh, this Saturday. Well, and I'm sure, September. Well, so, this Saturday? Oh, okay. All right. This Saturday, September 9. And our funeral service for Mr. Herman Clark, that's the father of our brother, Anthony and Earl Clark, will be held on Thursday, September 4, 14 at 11 a.m. And this service will be at the New Testament Church of God at 65 Waltham Park Road. So if you can attend, please attend and to support the family of our brother Anthony and brother Earl. Anthony, and everybody, all the Clark's family, please, if you can go out this Thursday, September 14th at the, the special funeral service for him. Prayer walk will be held on Sunday, September 17th, after following our morning service. So please remember our prayer walk, September 17th. Please have them down in your diaries. Of course, our sister continue to re remind us of our 80th anniversary, anniversary activities, and of course, our anniversary service. The service, of course, is on September 24, and the service starts at 4 p.m. So please write that down in your diary. So please invite those you can invite others to come and to join us in our special anniversary service on September 24. Our fun day continues uh, on September 30th following the anniversary service at the Bahia Principal Hotel and Beach Resort. And all the activities that comes with it, whether the water sport activities, the restaurant, the pool, and other amenities which we're there to enjoy. So please, I'm asking you to, to, to make your point. Um, Sister Casey, you have anything to, to highlight this morning? The 13th. All right, so we're asking to bring your payments if you can come um, the, the 13th um, to come and to make your, uh, your payments. Also, in regards to the t-shirts and the, the cost. The cost I know is $14,000 for the, which includes the transport and for those who want to take the bus, the transport should be provided. For those who are going to use their own vehicles, their own cars, whatever, you paid $12,000, you right? So children under 12 years, $8,000. And of course we have the t-shirts and the shirts which are available, at, uh, which costs at $2,300 and $2,500 respectively. Please remember. Our half night prayer meeting, members are encouraged to meet for prayer on Friday, September 29. Have that down in your diaries for half night prayer meeting, and it gets on the way online at 9 p.m. We ask you to continue to make your contributions to the Stop Spot initiative. Members are reminded to make contributions towards the Women's Missionary Fellowship Stop Spot initiative 
and donations can be given to any member who are here this morning from the Women's Missionary Fellowship Executive. All right, and we continue to contribute to our food basket, and we're asking to please, please make your contributions to Sister Cheryl Smith towards the food basket. She's here this morning, and she's looking forward, yes, she's here, uh, to your contribution. And of course, as I said before, our church ref refurbishing project still continues, so please, please, we're asking, we're begging you to continue to make your donations towards the church refurbishing project. I'm trusting you, my friends, this morning, that as you listen to these notices, that you pray very much for them. All right, and please remember them. We're gonna ask now to song service, and the worship is a comeback, and we're gonna join with them as we sing and worship God this morning, as we invite the song, lead us to worship it is to come, and to lead us in a time of worship. Morning, saints in Christ. Morning, Morning saints in Christ. Morning. When I know say I'm me up here, you know. So no know so I can, daddy, daddy. All right. Um, we invite you to stand as we just sing out to the Lord this morning. The first song we sing is, it's just a brief interlude. It says, to worship you I live, I live to worship you. And then we're going to, this is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. Thank you. 
next song says, Holy, 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 God Almighty, it is a privilege to worship you, maker of all universe. It is an honor just to stand before you. That should be our focus this morning when we're here singing these songs of praise to the Lord, acknowledging who he is, who we are to him, who he is to us, forgetting about all the distractions and just lifting up the name of the Lord this morning. Holy, holy God Almighty.
Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, as God's holy people, whom we are called. Remember in, the, in 1 Peter chapter 5, be ye holy as I am holy. And this is why we are here to exalt him 
First, we are coming to his presence, standing on holy ground to worship because we are here this morning to worship and to exalt him. Just before Sister Ariel Cole comes and give us the first scripture reading, let me remind you of our one additional notice. Father Holong and Friends presents Ruby at the National Arena on Saturday, September. I think they have two shows on Saturday, September 30, one starting at 2 p.m., and the other at 7.30 p.m. And on Sunday, October 1, uh, starting at 2 p.m., and the other show gets underway at 7 p.m. All right, so please be reminded. Um, I trust our brothers from the Missionaries of Poor are here this morning worshiping with us. We'd love to see us all out uh, supporting this very special venture. All right, so that's the Father Holong and Friends presents Ruby. This, or, well, not this Saturday, Saturday, September 30th. And we have two shows at 2 p.m. and 7.30. And of course, on Sunday, October 1, uh, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. respectively. All right, uh, let me now invite uh, Sister Ariel Koch to come and give us the first scripture reading taken from Genesis chapter 33, reading from verse 1 through to 17, after which I'm going to invite our pastor, Leopold Johnson, to come and to give us the intercessory prayer. And to intercede on our behalf. Good morning, church. Happy Sunday. Today I'll be reading Genesis 33, 1 to 17, the NIV version. Jacob looked up and there was Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the woman and children. Who are these with you? he asked. Jacob answered, They are the children God has graciously given your servant. Then the female servants and their children approached and bowed down. Next, Leah and her children came and bowed down. Last of all came Joseph and Rachel, and they too bowed down. Esau asked, What's the meaning of all these flocks and herds I have met? To find favor in your eyes, my lord, he said. But Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. No, please, said Jacob. If I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God, now that you have received me favorably. Please accept the present that was brought to you, for God has been gracious to me, and I have all I need. And because Jacob insisted, Esau accepted it. Then Esau said, Let us be on our way. I'll accompany you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are tender and that I must care for the ewes and cows that are nursing their young. If they are driven hard just one day, all the animals will die. So let my Lord go on ahead of his servant while I move slowly at the pace of the flocks and herds before me and the pace of the children until I come to my Lord in Seir. Esau said, then let me leave some of my men with you. But why do that, Jacob asked. Just let me find favor in the eyes of the Lord. So that day, Esau started on his way back to Seir. Jacob, however, went to Sukkoth, where he built a place for himself and made shelters for his livestock. That is why the place is called Sukkoth. Here you end at the scripture reading. Thank you. You praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pray God is good. Thank God for this another large day morning. 
into this beautiful chapel that God hands have shown us. How marvelous he is. It reminds me of my own life. It's where we're in a mess. God has transformed. And today I rejoice in him. Thank God for workmen, the whole plan of this renovating of this building it remind us, remind myself of our lives. And I like to challenge all of us that we have a work ahead of us to fill this building with God's people. And as we have learned last week, that we are God's embassy. We are God mouthpiece. We tell the story of how men and women, boys and girls, can find Jesus and have a future life. I pray that in the days ahead, we would work very hard to bring souls to accomplish this building. I'd like you to bow with me in prayer. I'm going to ask you to stand as we pray this morning. We are going to pray for the children also, as we also pray for the service, and to pray for our, our sister who, I don't know if you miss her, but I have missed her in the pulpit, and remind myself that she have gone into the foreign land. We are to pray for her, that God would make her a blessing in her day. Father, we thank you for life. We praise you that it continue in you. You take us out of the mud, out of the evil, and you brought us into life and peace with yourself. We give you praise and honor, Lord, for renovating this building and making it a marvelous chapel where we can come to worship in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the vacants it provides. We thank you for the privilege that we have to invite people, to counsel people, to bring people into life with you so that this chapel would be filled with young people and older people to worship the God who create and sustain life. We give you praise and honor, Lord, for there is none like you not to come, nor never be, be coming, for you are almighty, you are sovereign Lord, in you there is wisdom and power and liberty to do exceeding abundant above our ableness to ask or think. We give you glory and honor and praises and we thank you for your marvelous work, not only in this building that we have seen, but in our many lives that you have transformed into ladies and gentlemen, into your sight. We honor you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We worship you, for you are almighty God. There is none like you. Thank you, Lord, that you are unchangeable. Yesterday, today, forever, you remain the same. Men may change, but you will never. Thank you for your faithfulness to this service, to this ministry. Thank you, Lord, for your available in the days ahead to fill it with people, O oh God, who you have saved and brought into life with yourself. We pray your blessing upon each member that we would be hand to hand working together to bring souls to the place of repentance into the kingdom. We bless you, honor you, 
and adore your sweet name. We commit the children, the young people, this to you this morning. Lord, we ask that you guide their thoughts, mind and heart. Help them to know, O oh God, that to young is a great, great privilege to have a proper start. So give them a start with yourself, Lord. Bless their going and coming. Prosper their doings. Bless their parents. Bless their dependent. Sustain and encourage, uplift and strengthen. We commit them all into your hands. We thank you for the work here. We ask that you continue to bless your servant, inspired, uphold and strengthen. That your name continue to be glorified and magnify. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. For faithful is you who call us. Oh Lord, you promise to hear us. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. For our sister Ariel Cope for bringing the reading this morning on our pastor johnson for interceding on our behalf thank you so much this time i'm going to invite our sister shamil to come and to give us her reflection after which the brothers who are here from the missionaries of the poor will come and bring their item so first we have sister shamil thomas and of course the brothers from missionaries of the poor will bring their item Okay, good morning church I like that morning it sounds very bright I like it all right so my reflection is on Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 19 and it was from a Chip Ingram series that I was listening to on the invisible war and it was also something that we looked at in our care group session I think either in June or July now in the verse Paul was telling the believers to be ready to fight a spiritual battle and he indicates how believers are to fight, which is by putting on the full armor of God. Now, having listened to this message and seriously considered my journey throughout life so far, I came to the realization that, hey, you know, Sham, you have been in some invisible battle yourself, and clearly I was unaware. Now, I distinctly remember having a particular experience um, at a prior workplace. So I was being oppressed for some reason, I couldn't understand why um, and it seemed as if the devil was always winning so there was no justice taking place and I still couldn't understand why and I remember something happened and I you know called pastor had the conversation with pastor we prayed about it and I was just like okay all right just endure a little more okay peace Shamil no war um, faith yes this thing soon be over all right a little bit more patience all right Keep the humility coming along. Just go and chuckle a little, right? And that's what I did. And then, no, what made it also a little bit more easy is that I had another Christian friend in the space, and he offered some support and encouragement while I was along that journey. And uh, almost every morning, I would listen to a specific song, which is, um, it is called Cover Me. And the words, because I cannot sing, I'll just say the words. And the words are, let the peace of God cover me. Through the storm, cover me. Only in you, I am safe. Only in you, I am secure. Only in you, I find peace. So cover me, cover me. Cover me when I am hurting. Cover me when I'm not strong. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Cover me when all seems hopeless. Cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all understanding cover me. And so that peace there, that was what I got. Couldn't understand and I just got that and was able to proceed. Eventually I left the space though because it was not safe. Now, just a few pointers from the message and my reflection. And I just want to share those with you. And the first one is that you are personally responsible for your behavior. And pastor tell us that all the time. You can't say it's because I'm smarty, do this, that's why I do this. No. You made that decision to do that. So you're personally responsible for your behavior. The other thing as well is that we live in a fallen world. 
so bad things will happen to good people. And this part kind of hit me because sometimes you ask, why me? Why this will happen? And we live in a fallen world. It will happen. And then the third thing is that there is an invisible battle going on. And I don't know how many of you have that struggle where you're wondering which one to follow. Should I follow my heart? Should I follow my mind? All right, which one? I've had that epic struggle. And it was in my mind and my heart. And I was in that spiritual warfare. So because of this invisible battle, it's important to become aware of what's happening and knowing the truth about the situation because it will offer the clarity that you need to win the battle. At the end of the day, we all should be reminded that we fight the battle against evil, knowing Jesus already won the war. So utilize God's means of deliverance when spiritual attack occurs. God provides the armor, but you have to be the one to put it on. So I'm going to ask you a question. So in the morning when you wake up, you get yourself ready, right? You take a shower, right? Yes? Well, okay, so I'm going to assume that we do take showers in the morning, all right? So you take a shower and you put on your clothes. You put on your nice, clean clothes, right? Do you put on that spiritual armor in the morning as well? That's something to ponder because it is equally important. And I'll close with what Paul said in Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 11. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God so you can stand against the wiles of the devil. So remember, Christians, armor up. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have gathered here in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes or no? Yes, indeed, we have gathered here in the mighty name of Jesus. And firstly, my name is Brother Victor, and with me are Brother Peter, Brother Martin at the back, and Brother Archangel. And we are from the Missionaries of the Poor. As you know, Missionaries of the Poor work among the poorest of the poor. They take care of the homeless, the mentally challenged, handicapped children, and people suffering from HIV AIDS. And there is another reason for us to be here. And that reason is Father Holong and friends have returned to the stage show called Ruby. So this is the concert that Father Holong and friends are going to put at the National Arena, and the concert name is called Ruby. And as you know, in the past, Father Holong and friends have put numbers of concerts like, you know, Jesus 2000, Moses, and Isaiah, and this year, September 30th and October 1st, Father Holong and friends are putting a concert as we have just uh, seen the, the poster. And this is a great music, musical concert with beautiful music, dance, costumes, and a great story about a woman or a girl called Ruby. And so the concert, as I said, the concert is going to be at the National Arena. And the timing of the shows are Saturday, September 30th, 2023 at 2 p.m. On same day, Saturday, Saturday at 7.30 p.m. On an October 1st, 2023 at 2 p.m. And on October 1st, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. The ticket prices for the reserve seat 2,500 for adult central rollaway area, 1,800 for children's central rollaway, 1,500 for adult side rollaway, 1,200 and for the children is 1,000. So my friends, the concert is going to be for just one weekend. We have flyers, we have 
ticket as well as so please buy the tickets and invite your friends to the concert because remember one ticket can feed one less fortunate person and also if you have no money right now to buy the tickets you can still take them provided that you give me your name and your phone number you can still take the ticket provided with your phone number and name you can give to me so that later on i can contact to you so once again thank you so much for welcoming us and giving us time to present our presentation and thank you so much god bless you and i look for your support towards our ministry because remember this is not my work neither this is our work this is the work of god and god is using you and me to do his work thank you so much and god bless you all Thank you very much, my sister Shamil Thomas, for that word this morning. That we ought to armor ourselves before we face the world. And uh, of course, thanking our brothers from the missionaries of the poor for reminding us about our responsibility to the poor and to to give and support the show, uh, which comes up in a couple of weeks' time. We're going to turn to our Bibles of the, of the second scripture reading, which is taken from St. Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 44 to 46. And I want you all to stand as we read those three verses, as I read those three verses before the illumination of our, our Reverend Carlton is to come and to present the word. St. Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 44 through to 46. And I read, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. This is the word of the Lord. Invite the uh, song is to come and to bring the illumination as I invite our Pastor Dennis to come and to give us the instruction from the word.
Morning, saints in Christ. Morning, saints in Christ. All right. How many persons um, worked on John 15 last week? I see one hand. Let's go again. You didn't hear me. How many persons worked on John 15 last week? All right. So I see two more hands. I don't believe it though. Uh, we're not hearing. We're not hearing. Um, you can't make it if you don't hear. Can't make it if you don't hear. I, 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 and you have another one this week. I really am recommending that it don't take a lot of time. Really don't. An investment in your spiritual well-being. That's what it is. Don't take a lot of time. Um, you can't get something grow unless you water it. Know that? All right, so I hope, I hope, I hope this week we, the Lord can um, joke you with something. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not joking. We don't preach just to preach. We are here to help you grow in Jesus. If you don't grow in Jesus, you, it's not going to help you. Not going to help you. Let's pray. Father, open our hearts to hear and to be obedient. Help us to see how important it is for us to spend time in your presence and with your word. Nothing is of greater value. Lord, we're not getting it. I pray today the word will cause us to think and to get it. In Jesus' name, amen. Recently in the news, there was a situation where a child was drowning and a parent who couldn't swim went in to save the child. Can anybody say why? Why would you know you can't swim and you're going to save your child who is dying? Come now, somebody talk. Because uh, I, I see a hand wave on the back because I don't hear anybody. Well, all right, it's a parental instinct. All right. Why is that parental instinct? Are because of the love. Okay. So because you love the child, you jump in and the toy you drown. That's what you're saying. Alright. What is at the basis of that love? Would you jump in to save somebody else if the person was drowning? Do you think that parent would have jumped in? No, so what's the difference? Why jump in because your child is drowning? Huh? Oh, yeah, I know it's because it's your child, but what is at the bottom of that? Uh, all right. I hear love. Connection. Ah. Huh? Show your... All right. Could it be that your child is a valuable person to you? You don't think it's because you, you have great value in this child's life? Uh, come now, talk with me. Uh, usually, if you value something enough, you'll make a sacrifice for that thing. Would you agree? Would you agree? All right. Let's look at this, these two parables together this morning. Remember... I told you last week we are doing a series of parables and we dealt with the one about hearing last week but some of you didn't hear because you didn't do the homework. I'm serious. Remember what we said, you know. The word mean, if you hear, you do. If you don't do, you don't hear. And that's part of the problem with Christianity. We come to church but we don't hear because we don't do what we hear. And until you do it, you don't know it or you never heard it. We keep doing our own things. Did you listen to the reflection this morning? There's always this tug and war going on. What voice are you going to listen to? Huh? What voice are you going to listen to? So let's, let's talk about these two parables. Now remember I told you, normally the parables have a situation out of which Jesus tells the parable. Like for instance, the good Samaritan or so. But in these parables, 
Jesus is sitting down and some crowd gathered and he's telling them some things about the Christian life. And that's why he says, let he, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Because if you don't hear, you are not going to make the progress in the Christian life. Now, hear this parable. Very simple. It's three verses, but it has two parables. And the two parables are giving the same lesson, but it is contrasting some different things. So that's what we're going to do. It's very simple. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. Get that? Which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. Who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Right? So, two parables saying the same thing. If you watch the thing on the screen, I have highlighted which a man found and covered up, and I have highlighted search. I'm going to make some points from those two things, right, for this one. Now, notice what's happening. Um, this man, the first man, is a, making a random encounter. We go to the next slide. A random encounter. So you understand, he's in the field working, but he's not expecting to find anything. He's just working. And while he's working, he comes upon this treasure. Now, what he does, uh, it seems like he was a laborer in somebody else's yard. He comes upon the treasure. He covers it. Right? Now, some people would say, that's illegal or unethical. Because he probably should have informed the owner that he found the treasure. Right? Some people would say that. What he does, however, is he covered the treasure. Now, you have to understand that many times treasures were buried in the past. That's why they kept it safe. That's why when God gave the man the talents, he went and he dug a hole and put it in because it was the safest way to keep it. I want to think that we're going to have to go back to that. A friend of mine was telling me just yesterday that this lady was flagged to lose $5 million because she didn't make any investment in her. She didn't make any any um, transaction over five years, and the government has flagged it to take the five million. Because they say it is a dormant account, so she's a bank manager, and she's helping the person to not lose the five million. But the government flagged it to take it away, because they haven't done any transaction in five years. Oh, it's very interesting that when you go to bank money, you pay. When you go to draw money, you pay. If you leave it in there, you pay. And if it drops below the threshold, they take off all of it. It's a very, very interesting thing. So we might have to go to the hole and put it in. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> So here's a random encounter. He comes upon this and he realizes it's of great value. He covers it and he goes away. And he goes away. Notice the second one though. In the second parable, the man is searching for a pearl. So there's a deliberate encounter. It is not random like the first one. He knows that something there is valuable. And so what he does is he goes about searching for that which is valuable. And then he comes upon it and he realizes, yes, this is what is most valuable. And he goes away, sells everything, and come back and buy it. So both of them have done the same thing, but the encounter is different. Are you with me? Now, I want to tell you that the, the great treasure here is the gospel. And it is telling us that God is encountered in different ways. Some persons have nothing about God on their mind, nothing at all about God on their mind, and then somebody witnesses to them, and bam, they realize this is great treasure. They realize this is what I really need. And there are some persons, if you talk to them, they are searching. They have gone through Buddha, they have gone through um, Krishna, they have gone through Rasta, they have gone through all kind of stuff, and then they come up and find Jesus, and they say, oh yes, this is it. So what the parable, two parables is doing, it is showing the different ways in which people come in contact with God. Some come. Um, I remember this young man testifying that there was an opening meeting and went down there to check out the girls. And when he went down there to check out the girls, the gospel hit him down and he became a Christian. He forget to to come check out the girls. You understand? So the reality is, some of us are going to find that we are going to just come upon 
the fact that, and maybe if we took a, a, a show of hands this morning, some persons, the gospel came to you in a way you never even expect. And others of you grew up in families where you heard the gospel all along. Or you have been searching. Some people are searching to find the truth. And then one day they find the truth. First point of the two parables. Second point. Notice the same text is up there. But notice the words that I have highlighted. A man, generally, and a merchant. So there are two different classes of people. This is a man who is a laborer. He's in the field and he finds. But this is a merchant. This is a rich man. This is a man of society. And he is looking very hard to find the treasure. So what are the points? First, we have a common laborer. And secondly, we have a rich merchant. So again, what it is saying, this great treasure is given to all and sundry. Doesn't matter what class you are in or where you grow up or whatever, you can get the treasure of salvation. Still with me? So we can say the kingdom includes all kinds of people are included in the kingdom. Right? It does not, it is not something that only certain people get. So whether you are in the lower class of society or the higher class of society or in between that, the parable say you can find this treasure. And the question is though, have you found the treasure? Because if you don't find Trevor, you're in serious problem, right? Now, notice um, the response to the encounter. And I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't highlight this properly. Notice the first one says, then, is joy, then in his joy he goes and sells all he has and buys that field. And a merchant in his search of fine pearls, who on finding one of great value, went and sold all that he had and brought it. Now, you see, here's a key now. The first man is filled with joy. Come upon this. You know, talk about ethical issue. You realize is that the only way he can take this, notice that, is if he owns the land. So he came upon oil. He covers it. He goes, he buys the land. Now you must understand the man who sells him the land don't have any hesitation to sell him. So that's important, right? I want to tell you that the great treasure we have is from a God who is willing to give you. Once you give, you come and say, I want the treasure. God is willing to give you the treasure. Are you with me? You still with me? Yes. God is not going to hold back. For as many as receive him, to them gave he the power to become what? The children of God. So once, once you desire this treasure, this treasure of the gospel of Jesus Christ, God is not going to refuse you that treasure. And on Wednesday, I'll deal with some other issues with regards to that. And then notice what is important is that both of them understand that this is valuable. Yes, it's of the greatest value. And so I want to say to you, unless you know the value, you will not pursue the treasure. And what is happening to us is that we do not understand the value of Christianity. We do not understand the value of what we have in Jesus Christ. Let me tell you how valuable you are. God deemed you valuable enough to give Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary for your sins. God considered you so valuable that he gave his only son, John 3, 16, to die on the cross of Calvary for your sins. God wanted so much to take some people out of hell that he gave his son to die on the cross of Calvary so that they can have life eternal. If you're a Christian, stop and think about it. It costs God his son for you to be saved today and to know him as your savior and your Lord. Notice, notice in this whole thing, how the men pursue they didn't stop. They were determined. They were going to get this treasure. And they were willing to give up everything to get the treasure. Well, tell your neighbor, you are valuable to God. Just tell your neighbor, you are valuable to God. And because you are so valuable, God sent his only son to die on the cross of Calvary to pay the price of sin. So that you can be delivered. You know, whatever you find valuable, you don't have a problem 
to pay the price. So some of us think education is very valuable. And we'll go without sleep to study. The lady jumped into the water because her son was dying and she couldn't swim. Some of us who think money is important will make every sacrifice to work the last dollar. Yes? And I could go on. You can, you can think of whatever is valuable to you. I was, I was just very happy when I saw so many young people on the Jamaican team in the World Championships. I was very happy to see in the long jump we came second, third, and fourth out of eight finalists. Not great thing that. Yes. And we are expecting that if they are healthy and they continue to train, Paris is going to be the paradise of Jamaica. Because we have a lot of young people who are doing well. Can you imagine if, if Mr. Ebert did get to jump? He might be the longest jumper, you know, win the medal. Or, you know, understand what I talk about. Oh, you know, follow sports, leave it alone. But what I'm saying to you this morning is, whatever is valuable to you, you are willing to put the sacrifice in to get it. Whatever is valuable to you, you are willing to pursue it to the end so you can have it. That's why I'm disappointed that you didn't read um, John chapter 15 last week. Very disappointed. And the successive weeks in which I've given you an acton sheet, I am asking myself the question, is Christianity really valuable to you? Is Jesus of any great value to you, having given his life for you? Why you can't take a few minutes out of your day to read a text that don't last five minutes, ten minutes, and to reflect on it? I am disappointed. In fact, I'm not disappointed. I'm disagreeing. Our point is too small. That you have not taken the time just to read the word a little bit more so you can be drawn closer to Jesus. And I'm giving you another one this week. I am telling you, I am then asking myself, is this really of great value to us? Is it really? In my understanding of life, nothing is more valuable than Christianity. Hear what Jesus said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I don't think we hear it. Some of us expect to become mature Christians just so. Can't work. You can't even work by just coming to church on a Sunday morning. Maturity comes out of obedience and deliberate action. We have said in this church many times, you can drift into sin, but it takes deliberate actions to grow in Christ. Some of us value our children more than God. Some of us value our spouses more than God. Some of us value our work more than God. Some of us value all kinds of things more than God. And yet still the text says, God should be the center of everything you do. Here's, here are these two men. They have found the pearl of great prize. They have found the hidden treasure, which represents Jesus and the gospel. And they are willing to do whatever it takes in order to gain it. Some of us say, that's too big a sacrifice. When Elijah came to the woman and he said, bake me the cake first. After that, you're going to have much to eat. <laughs> she could have easily said, no. I think sometimes God puts us in the position that he put that woman in. And she was able to say, all right, I'm going to bake it first. I think too many of us are so focused on our own ideas and concepts that we are forgetting that the word of God is supreme to us. And when you are thinking, this is the way, God says, no, there's another way. And if you follow my way, then you will see the blessings of God in your life. We are thinking that we are the key and we can do it. By the way, who knows? <laughs> We were talking yesterday in our board meeting. Things can change very rapidly and very quickly. And we have no control over them. None at all. That's why we need to hear the word. That's why we need to do what the word tells us. Because at the end of the day, we face God. Notice the sacrifice required. And if you look, sells all sold all 
Are you willing to sell out everything you have for Jesus? What is it you think that is just so much you can't give up for Jesus? I was reflecting, huh? I was reflecting on a little thing and I was saying, is it too much to give a little bit more to the building? Is it too much to lend a little money for the building? And if you don't get it back, it is still God work. I was just reflecting in myself about that. I was just reflecting because at the end of the day, every single thing you have, you have because of God. And that's why David said, of thine own have we given thee. Because all things come from thee. And some of us are so passionate about what we have, not knowing that it, uh, it belongs to God and we are just managing it. And in the course of things, if it's something to do with the advancement of God's kingdom, why am I like this? And is God's kingdom not going to advance? I was just thinking to myself. And I hope you, some of you will think in yourselves and see where you can make another contribution that is necessary because God has given you and you have it ordered somewhere and you're not using it for nothing right now, but you still not see the purpose in which God is asking you to give it. Let me ask you, notice what happened. What was it required? It required the abandonment of all things. Jesus said to him, if you are going to come to me and don't first eat mother and father and husband and wife and children or once a picnic, you are not worthy of the kingdom. You are not worthy of the kingdom. Not my words. There are so many of us looking forward for the blessing plan. But in terms of what is required for us to give back to God, we hold on tight to it. Our fist is tight. And we want the blessing. It's not going to work. These parables Jesus are using, Jesus is using to say that you must be willing to make a complete sacrifice for the kingdom of God. That's what he's saying. And these men, when you discover how great salvation is, when you discover the value that there is in Jesus, no sacrifice, not too much will make. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span. Did span at Calvary. Mercy, there was grace. And grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. We are, we are really hurting ourselves when we believe we can't make a sacrifice for the kingdom of God. We are really hurting ourselves when we believe that we are the ones who progress on our own because you can't go nowhere without Jesus. You can't make a progress without Jesus. I'm about to done. Notice it requires the abandonment of all things and it requires focus on one thing. Last week we talked about the whole matter of uh, worries and cares. And Jesus turned to Martha when she came and said, <laughs> Help me out now. Mary, not do nothing. I'm here to do everything. And he says, <laughs> You are Martha, Martha. You are concerned about many things, you know. But one thing is really important. I want to tell us that many of us are like Martha. We are around Jesus, but we're not with him. Because when you are with him, you are focused on him and what he wants to do in your life. You are focused on where he wants to take you. You understand that God placed you here when he did. And that he brought you into the kingdom when he did. Because he has a purpose for you. We were talking on Wednesday night about the purpose of predestination. And we are saying that for every one of us, Um, Ephesians 2 verse 10 works. He has prepared some good works beforehand for you to walk in. And the only way you're going to say like Paul at the end of it, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. You can't finish your course if you don't walk in the good works that God has given you. And then Paul could say, henceforth, there's a crown laid up for me. Because he has walked in the way of God. Don't let the devil fool you. 
Don't let the devil trick you. If you know Jesus, if you understand the significance of the value of knowing Jesus, it should be easy for you to give everything. You see, when you value something, the sacrifice becomes easy, very easy. That's why the lady could jump into the water because her child is of value to her. Think about the times when you have done some crazy things and ask yourself why. Because whatever you are doing it for, it's because you think it has value. I would never do some of those things. I see people studying and don't sleep for three days. I couldn't do that. Anytime I'm studying, one side read a line twice, me shut the book and go to my bed because nothing else now coming out of their head. That was my, that was my motto of, of, of study. I'm I not going to stretch myself to uh, cause that is wasteful time. <laughs> That's me. You might be different. But, 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 but I'm just saying that so many people put themselves under adversities to gain something that they think is valuable. Uh. And after you get it, Solomon said, Vanity of vanity and vexation of spirit. I'm looking straight at Sister Bennett as she tried to complete her dissertation. I don't know where she is yet, but I'm sure, sure she can tell you what is required. She said to me one day, she don't know how we who did it 40 years ago did it without all the modern convenience that they have to do it. And I said to her, when I was doing it, I said, I don't know people wrote dissertation before computer. And my computer was a QX16. You, 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 you put in the floppy disk, you turn it on, put in the floppy disk, make two cup of coffee and not come up yet. And she's saying, she don't understand why I did it with that. And I'm saying, but there are people who did it to typewriter. And I was wondering the same thing. Who comes and do it to typewriter? A lot of sacrifice involved. My wife will tell you, there are days when my floor just had paper all over it and nothing can move. Because if you move, it's a problem. Are you understanding? Why am I putting myself through that? Because I wanted to finish a degree. But guess what? That degree is written on a parchment paper that will last for 500 years and make a dead left it on the wall. You get the point? Something greater for you to put your faith in is Jesus. Something greater for you to abandon everything else for is Jesus. And this morning, if you are here and you have never trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me tell you something. He valued you enough to die on the cross of Calvary. Do you value the sacrifice enough that you are willing to give your life to Jesus? Hear what he said. If you come to me, I will not cast you out. Hear what he says. Neither in heaven or on earth is there another name by which you can be saved. He is the only way to salvation. Hear what he says. One God, one mediator, and between the two of them is me. Jesus is not just saving you to save you from hell. Jesus is saving you to upgrade you. I wonder if you understand that. Because then you are not just a person. You are the brother of Jesus with an eternal hope. Hallelujah. You don't bless God for that? Hallelujah. If you know Jesus, you are his brother. You have the inheritance that is awaiting you that cannot be touched by any thief on earth. No matter how them can scam. No matter how them can use computer. And can't touch it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. It is safe and secure. And Jesus wants to give you that. So if you don't know Jesus, I want to challenge you to give your life to Jesus. And if you know Jesus, listen to my question. Have you encountered Jesus? Have you met him? If you have never met Jesus, you need to meet Jesus this morning. Second question. Has the encounter brought you joy? How many of us when you get Jesus are full of joy? I was, certainly. What are you willing to abandon? What is it that is holding you back from growing and being the person God wants you to be? What are you willing to let go so that Jesus can be central in your life? Last question. What sacrifice are you prepared to make? This week, I've given you in your action sheet the actions of Elisha. 
and the sacrifice he made when he took over from Elijah. Make sure you take the time to look at it and still go back under John 15. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, our Pastor and Reverend Carlton Dennis, for bringing us the word this morning. I will bless the Lord for his word. God values us so much that he sacrificed his one and only son on a cruel Roman cross. The question is this morning for us, is what do we value most in our life? And the question is asked, is it our jobs, our children, our spouse, or the things that we have achieved in life? Do we place our values in all of these things? I think that this morning, my brothers and sisters, that we should value our relationship with God. That is the most important thing. And the only way we can value our relationship with God is when we study the word of God, spend time in prayer, and to do his will, and to also to live holy life, which is what he has called us to. I'm going to ask the song to come and join me up front as we turn our hymnals as we give our offering this morning and to hymn number 558 as we sing Jesus I my cross of taken as we give our offering this morning ushers are waiting on us All right, let us sing. Jesus, I my cross of taken, all to live and follow thee. Destitute, despised, forsaken, thou from hence my all shalt be. I will follow thee, my Savior, thou the shalt. Thy blood for me, and though all the world's forsaken, by Thy grace I will follow Thee. Perish every fond ambition. Perish every fond ambition. All have sought and hoped and known. Yet our riches might. smile upon me God of wisdom, love and mind force me hate and friend this me oh I will follow thee my Savior thou be shed thy blood for me oh and the Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come in your presence this morning, God, I just want to give you thanks that you have been such a good God to us. 
you provide jobs to us so that we can give back a portion of what we earn to you to help to build your kingdom. God, we pray for this offering that we will use it according to your will and to your way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Stanza 6. Oh, it is not in grief to harm me while thy love is left to me. Everybody has abandoned us will always follow him no matter what god bless you let me at this time just to thank you all for coming this morning for those who are here in the sanctuary for those who have taken part in the service we thank you so much the brothers from the missionary of the poor thank you very much my brothers for coming and joining with us this morning for those who are online who have joined us either on the zoom or the youtube platform thank you very much for joining with us and to worship with us. At this time, we want to do a benediction as we go. The blessing. Hello.